Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that's been produced specially for you. Welcome kids to our online service that has been specially made for you. For the last two weeks, we have been on a journey to know more about the Bible. Do you remember what we learned about last week? Yes, we learned that the Bible can be used as a guide through our time here on earth. Hey, look, there goes a butterfly. Oh yes. Did you see that? Yeah. Do you know what a butterfly is before it actually becomes a butterfly? Uh, is it a caterpillar? You're right! A caterpillar becomes a butterfly through a process called metamorphosis. It means to change into another form. Well, can you tell me, can a caterpillar fly? What? No. Does it look or act like a butterfly? No, not at all. That's right. But you know, when a, when a caterpillar's metamorphosis or change happens, it becomes into a new creature. It becomes a butterfly. And the caterpillar can no longer look 
or act like a caterpillar because it has become an entirely new creature a beautiful colorful butterfly and that's how it is when god saves us from our sins we are forgiven for all the wrong things that we have done and we have become a new creation how do you know that yeah it's written here in the bible and that's why we should always thank god for giving us the bible because the bible is the source of life you know the bible says in 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 if anyone is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come becoming a new creation is metamorphosis or change that god makes happen in our hearts and lives when god saves us and we become born again born again what do you mean by that do you mean i should become a baby again no then then should i change the way i look am i born again now no not at all that's not what i'm talking about being born again is more than changing our physical appearance or our clothes then what do you mean by born again hmm. well being born again means having new life it is a spiritual change that happens inside our hearts what so how can we change our hearts do we have to have a heart transplant what then heart transplant no no not at all you know in the bible there was a person who had the same doubts that like you have right now and jesus cleared his doubts so let's look into the story right away are you all ready wait do you think we are forgetting something mm. oh yes we must pray before we go further shall we all bow our heads close our eyes and pray children father god we thank you for this lovely day thank you for bringing us here together i pray god that as we uh, go forward learning more about you that you will teach us to be uh, more and more like you god and i pray that you will touch our hearts and you will speak to us god and we will we will want to know more of you god and like like this person who asks so many questions i pray god that we will ask questions and you will speak to us in jesus name we pray amen, amen. hey everyone before we hear today's story tell me what are the differences between a newborn baby and someone of your age quickly type it in the live chat i'm waiting it's easy to see the physical differences between newborn babies and those who are older right but there are also other differences that you can't tell about people by just looking at them when you look at someone how can you tell whether the person is good or bad you can't right in the same way you can't really tell if a person is a christian by just looking at his or her appearance Our Bible lesson today is about a man named Nicodemus. When Jesus was ministering on earth, he did many miracles and shared the wisdom of God through his teaching. Crowds of people wanted to see him, and one of them was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now a Pharisee is a leader in the temple of God. And one night, Nicodemus went to Jesus. He wanted to see for himself the wisdom of God that Jesus had. 
Nicodemus called Jesus Rabbi and said to him, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs we are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. But Nicodemus, like you, did not understand this. Remember, children, that as a Pharisee, he was taught that obedience to the law of God was the way to God. Besides, how can a man be born again like a baby when he is old? Nicodemus said, Surely, one cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born again. Now you tell me, was Jesus really talking about a second physical birth? No, he was talking about a spiritual birth. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Now this confused Nicodemus more, and Jesus knew that Nicodemus was confused. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus that if he cannot believe the earthly things, then how can he believe heavenly things? He asked Nicodemus, do you remember the story of Moses in the wilderness, lifting up the brass serpent and everyone who looked at it was saved? Do you remember that? The same way the Son of Man will be raised up and everyone who will believe in him will have eternal life. Then Jesus told Nicodemus that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What Jesus was saying is that Nicodemus needed to be born again. He needed new life. But this life cannot be gained by obeying the law like a Pharisee. It can only be found by believing in the only begotten Son sent by God. And you know who that is? Yes, that's right. It is Jesus. Jesus was talking about the inside of a person. Jesus meant that our souls are born again when we believe in him. That's because when you believe in Jesus, your life changes. You stop doing things that are bad and start doing those good things. You don't live how you want to live anymore. You live how God wants you to live. It's like you're starting all over in life. You got a fresh start. It's like you're being born again. When we believe in Jesus and become his followers, true Christians, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Can any of you see God or the Holy Spirit? No. Then how do you know he's there? Let me show you something. Do you like balloons? I do. Do you know that there is air in the balloon? Can you see the air in it? You can't see the air. You can only see this balloon that is filled and you know that there is air inside. That's the same way 
with God and the Holy Spirit. We can't see them, but we know they're there because we see what they do. We can see the whole world God created. And we know the Holy Spirit is living inside us because we can feel Him telling us what the right things to do are. Well, children, how do we know all these things? That's right, through the Bible, God's Word. The Bible tells us that we are all born sinners, but it also tells us that because of Jesus Christ and because of what He did for us on the cross, we can have a new life, free from sin. So tell me, children, what should we do to know what's written in the Bible? Exactly! We need to read it! The Bible, the Word of God, He's the source of new life. When we stay connected to Jesus, He makes our lives brand new. Now when you hear someone say, Born again Christian, you should know what they mean. When you are born again, your outward appearance does not change at all. What changes is what's on the inside of you, your heart. When you are born again, you no longer belong to this world. You belong to Jesus. And this new life is not temporary like our bodies. It is everlasting. And the source of this new life, Jesus, of course, we know this because it is written in the Word of God. The Word of God is our source for new life. Okay, children, are you ready for a knowledge check? Have you all been paying attention to today's lesson? Let's check. I will ask you a few questions and I want you to quickly type in your answers in the live chat section. Are you ready for your first question? Here we go. Question number one. When did Nicodemus come to Jesus? A. In the morning. B. In the afternoon or C. At night. Come on children, type in your answers. That's right, at night. Question number two. Who did Jesus say would see the kingdom of God? A. One who receives water baptism. B. One who is born again or C. One who is good. That's right. One who is born again. Good job everyone. You did so well. Okay children, are you ready to learn the power verse for this week? Come, let's learn it together. Say it with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed and behold, the new has come. One more time everyone. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Alright, now come, let's write that down and do some scripture art. You ready? So children, can you tell me what did we learn about the caterpillar today? We learned that after it transforms into a butterfly, it no longer looks or acts like a caterpillar because it has become an entirely new creation. So now I'm going to be drawing the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly. 
So let's draw a caterpillar and then it becomes a chrysalis. So I'm drawing a chrysalis here and then it emerges out as a butterfly. I'm just trying that there and then we finally have our butterfly so I'm just gonna color now so this is the butterfly emerging out I'm going to color my butterfly blue. You can color it whatever color you like. Blue, pink, orange. Color my caterpillar. Coloring my chrysalis too. And I'm coloring my butterfly now. So the caterpillar transforms into a chrysalis and then we see the butterfly emerging out and then this entirely new creation, the butterfly. So just like how the caterpillar transforms and becomes into a butterfly, if we are in Christ, we become a new creation. That's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. So let's write that down. Can you say it with me? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And then you can color all these letters however you want. You can just decorate your page. I'm going to go in with yellow and blue. So this is what my scripture art looks like. Let's read it together one more time. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So if you're happy with your work, quickly take a picture of it and send it to kidsonline at apcwo.org. Hope you enjoyed today's online service, kids. Join us again next week to learn more from God's Word. Do any of you have a testimony to share or a prayer request you want us to pray for? You can write to us at kidsonline at apcwo.org. We'll be glad to hear from you. Wishing all those celebrating their birthdays this week a very happy birthday. God bless you. We will be praying for you. See you all again next Saturday, everyone. Bye.